how I successfully upgraded my 120 gigabyte hard drive to a 500 gigabyte hard drive. Hi, my name is Latifa. Um, I wanted to just put together a little piece of, of a video about upgrading my hard drive. Um, right now, we're upgrading on a, a MacBook Pro. And um, the reason why I was upgrading is because I had bought, like, about six months ago, 120 gig, you know, and that was, like, something big, and I was just, like, it did not last at all. And we're trying to do video and editing. These are the things that I grabbed together. Because I really want to keep my other hard drive, so I went ahead and got me an enclosure. Real simple, plugs up with USB, it comes with a screwdriver. I'm going to figure out and see if this all works. It shouldn't be that complicated. You also need to have a screwdriver. Um, this screwdriver has to have a T6, which looks like a star. One, two, three, four, five, six, six points. Also, this is like a little area I just put together in my kitchen, and I use a dark cloth because I changed my hard drive before, and what I noticed was that you cannot lose a screw. Like, you don't want to have that happen, and they're quite expensive to replace. So what I had went ahead and did was got me a cloth. It was quite dark, so I know if I did lose something, it would only fall in a certain place, like a crack or something. And there is no crack, so it can't fall behind my table. And can't, if it falls on the floor, I'm just going to be really careful. Plus, also got the little tray with a dark cloth on it too, as well. And I have. And the reason why I have that is because um, you want to have a nice neat orderly fashion of placing your screws because like I said you don't want to lose them. Okay. So you got your screwdriver, you got your um you got your little uh, tray. Guess what? It's not like I know all this stuff by heart, but I got like the basic general idea, so that's why I think you might appreciate this video. Go to extremetech.com and type in upgrade your MacBook Pro's hard drive for instructions. Um, I feel pretty confident that everything will turn out. The major thing that you're going to want to have is just be orderly. And this is a 500 gigabytes. That's almost, you know, three and a half times what I had already. So that's one under 2.5 inches, okay? So, that's that. We begin our installation by removing the battery from the back of the MacBook Pro. After pushing the tabs, the battery pops right out. There you should see three small screws shaped like a Phillips. Go ahead and remove those. Those screws hold the RAM cover on. Don't forget, while removing those screws, place them on that tray so that you don't lose them. The method that I use is placing the ones that I remove from the machine first towards the back. So that way when I go back, I can tell the order that I took them out. They're not as difficult as they seem, but the RAM modules can be pulled out by, by simply pulling on the metal brackets located on the sides of the RAM modules. You can see them. Push them over some and then the RAM modules will pop up to a 30 degree angle. Then you can easily slide them out. Like the screws, I always sit the hardware out in the order that I remove them. We gotta get inside the case now, so we'll have to remove a lot of screws. We have already removed the RAM modules, so you'll see a pair of those torque screws there. Also, it's time to grab that T6 screwdriver. It's about the right size to remove them. We'll remove those four Phillips screws on the bottom near the back of the MacBook Pro and also near the hinge. Also in the pictures on Extreme Tech, they've circled the screws in red and the Phillips screws in blue. That should help a little bit. When you're inside that battery compartment, there's a pair of Phillips screws you're going to have to get out too. These are a little bit tricky, but not that hard. I know you'll be able to do it. So, as you see, there's four screws located on each side of your MacBook Pro. You're going to need to take those out. Yeah, it's a little tedious, but it's fun.
congratulations, you're ready to peer inside. So the best way to get inside is by gripping from the keyboard that's attached to the monitor. Go ahead and pull on the sides there until it kind of loosens up. There are some little tabs in there, so don't be nervous if you hear a little popping sound. But you do need to be careful of a ribbon that's inside attached to the computer. It's there by cable so you can look inside and see. Don't pull too hard though. If you hear any popping, don't get nervous. That's normal. Just be careful of that ribbon and you'll be just fine. Once you've gotten that loosened all the way up, just lift it up to the top. And you see that ribbon there? Yeah, that's the one. So now we can talk about that little ribbon. We're gonna gently pull it off, but don't worry because it's easy to put back. You just need to look really closely at that little black plastic block it came off of and the other underside of the ribbon cable. Notice how they're notched together to fit a certain way. Make sure that when you reassemble, you fit it right back on its little keyed block. It's not hard, it's just something you need to pay attention to. So, we're almost ready to remove the hard drive. Grab your screwdriver. On the right hand side is an optical disk drive. On the left is your hard drive right in the corner. It's affixed by two screws. You're going to go ahead and unscrew those two screws on the side with your small screwdriver. Don't forget, keep everything in a neat and orderly fashion. That way you know where to put it back. Under top of there is the Bluetooth module and also a ribbon. You're just gonna lift up gently on that ribbon. It's attached with a little bit of adhesive. We're not gonna take anything off. We're just going to lift it gently and slide out your hard drive from underneath. It's not hard. You just need to be careful that you don't bend any of the ribbons there and that you gently remove it. So now that you've freed that hard drive, then be aware of those four plastic nubs on the side of the hard drive. Those keep it from sliding it around. You're going to grab your screwdriver and remove them off the side. Once you've unscrewed them with your T6 screwdriver, you remember the one that's shaped like a star, then you can take them off and put them on the side. Now that you've screwed in those four plastic nubs back into your new hard drive, you can easily slide that back into place. Now, this is a time where you might want to be mindful of everything that you've removed and also that you have not crimped any ribbons in any way. You've also attached back that ribbon to your trackpad and that it fits snugly in. Otherwise, your keyboard may be unresponsive. Well, I just wanted to say thanks for joining me for my video. You know, I hope that it's helped you out. Just wanted to let you know. Don't have too much apprehension. Just talk to you later. This is Latifah. Peace.